Oh, hello, math magicians. On this lovely day, we are going to be solving a system of linear equations by elimination. So buckle up and get ready to rumble. Another name, by the way, for elimination is linear combination. And the reason for that is because as we add together some equations, in other words, as we combine the equations together, one of the variables is going to be eliminated, squashed, deleted. And if we have a system of linear equations, por ejemplo esto, then we have two variables and we say, how do we get, how do we get the variables by themselves? And the answer is, well, if we get rid of one of them, then we can get that variable by itself. So let's see what our steps are here. Our first goal is to always make sure that our terms are aligned. What do I mean by that? Do you remember in the olden days when you were doing something like this and we wanted to add them together? And Well, what would you do? Well, you wouldn't say this 2.1 and 3.18, right? I wouldn't line it up at the end like that because it just doesn't work. So what we have to do is line up the ones place, the decimals, the tenths place, and the hundredths place. And in this case, we might want to fill that in. So we align the terms so things match up. That's the same thing we want here, is we want our x's, our y's, our equals, kind of like our decimal point, and our constants to be lined up. They don't all have to be standard form like this puppy is, but it would be wise to get them in, in the same form. So that's the first step. We're going to align our terms. Next, you're going to multiply the equations together in order to, here's the point, not multiplication. The point is opposite terms. What do I mean by that? See down here, these are opposite terms because that's a 3x and that's a negative 3x. These are not opposite. That's 2y, that's 4y. If this had been a negative 4y, then those would be opposite terms. So as a reminder, opposite terms could be like this, 2x and negative 2x, or 8y and negative 8y. Why are those important? Because of this one true fact that opposites sum to zero. When you add opposites together, you get zero. Kuchiga, kuchiga. So you can add the equations together. Why? Because something's going to break down and be deleted. Deleted! You solve for the remaining variable. You substitute that value into any equation, and you solve for the last variable, and then you just double check. So we're going to go step by step through this. The first example already has steps one and two done for me. Step one, aligning. See, x's, y's, equals, and constants are all lined up. Step two is already done for me. Why? Because I already have opposites right there. So we're just going to add them together. For the sake of this workflow, I'm going to rewrite that over there, but you don't have to in future. Multiply equations, no need to in this case. Now, just like over here, when I, were adding, when I was adding these together, I put a little plus sign and this, and we added things together. Lo mismo aquí, we are going to do the same. I'm going to draw my little bar, put a little plus here, and notice 3x minus 3x is 0. No need to write anything. No need to write 0x. No need to write anything. Just bring down the 2y plus 4y is 6y and equals 12. <clears throat> so that was step three. We added the equations together. Now step four is we're going to solve for the remaining variable. In this case, I just have to divide both sides by 6. So y is 2. Now I'm going to substitute the variable into any equation. So I'm going to take this 2 and plug it either here or here, and it doesn't matter which one. Now I don't like negatives so much, so I'm probably going to choose the top one. So 3x plus 2y, and we already know what y is, is 2 equals siete. So 3x plus 4 equals, uh, excuse me, 7. Subtract four from both sides to get three, and x is one. So over here, I'm claiming that my solution is one, two. Claiming that my solution is one, two. So it's wise for us now to check. 
Now I didn't put space here for a check, so I apologize. So I'll do a check over on this side here. So three times one plus two times two, does that equal to seven? And here is three plus four equals seven, and seven equals seven, so it does work for the first one. Now let's check the second one. Negative three times one plus four times two, does that equal five? So negative three plus oh equals five, five equals five, kachiga, kachiga, done. So remember, when you commit to the answer, put a ring around it. And there we go. Now down below is your turn. Notice that with this one, steps one and two are already done for us. One and two are already done, so all we have to do is step three. Pause and practice this. And here's your check, and we're going to commit to the answer right here as 7, negative 3. What I did, step 1 and 2 was done, so when I added these together, the x is dropped out. We're left with 2y equals over here is negative 6. Add the <clears throat> divide both sides by 2 to get y equals negative 3. Take that negative 3 and plug it into one of the y's here. I'll plug it into the top there to get x is 7. Now we just check to make sure it works. Now in the next example, it turns out that we don't have step two done for us. Notice that step one is done. Things are aligned. x, y equals and constants are all set. So what I need to do is think in my brain, my little gray cells, how do I make either these guys opposite or these guys opposite? And it never really matters which one in terms of the final answer. However, it might be easier in some contexts. Well, notice that here, if I were to multiply the top by 2, I would get a 4, which would be opposite. So if I have to multiply this by 2, then I need to do the same all across the board. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. I'm going to pretty much just multiply everything by 2 and get this. 4x minus 6y equals 4. <coughs> Got to watch out. Remember, you have to multiply everything, even that 4. So let's fix that. And that's not a 4. That's an 8. Now, I multiply the bottom by 1. In other words, I make no changes. Now, coincidentally, two things are going to drop out here. So step 1 is done for me. Step 2, I just did by multiplying the top by 2. Step 3 says to add things together. Notice that my x's drop out here, and I'm left with a negative y equals. And these actually drop out as well to be a 0. 8 minus 8 is 0. When I take the opposite of both sides, y is 0. So there's my step 4. <clears throat> okay, step 5, and it doesn't matter where you do step 5, is I need to plug that 0 into either this y or that one. Doesn't really matter. I chose the top one last time. Maybe I'll choose the bottom this time. So negative 4x plus 5 times 0 equals negative 8. So negative 4x equals negative 8, and x equals positive 2. So step 6 says, <clears throat> I'm claiming that 2, 0 is my solution. And as we can see, the check does indeed work. So when you solve it and you are sure, commit to it by putting a ring around it. Now, sometimes life is not as easy as we want it to be. In this case, step one is done for me. Ooh, 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 ooh. Things are aligned, as you can see, the equals and the constants. However, if I multiply the top by any given number, integer in particular, notice I'm not going to get the opposite of down here. If I multiply by, the, oh, I can't get to a 7. I can't get to a 2 from there, or a 3. Uh, and the same goes for the other way around. Now, I can multiply by decimals and fractions to do that, but that might be too complicated. So what we can do is, instead of multiplying one of the equations, we can multiply both of the equations. So if I consider this one here, and I'm looking at just the a's, notice it doesn't have to be the first um, letters. It could have been the second ones here. But notice, I'm looking for a common multiple of 2 and 3. Well, I get a 6. So how do I make this top into a 6? We'll multiply that by 3. So how do I make the bottom into a 6, or more specifically, into a negative 6? We'll multiply it by a negative 2. 
Notice shortcut wise, I could just take this multiply down here, take this multiply by down here, and just double check that one of them is opposite. Okay, so step one is done. Now step two says I am going to multiply things out. So 6a plus 18z equals 12. And then the next one is negative 6a plus 14z, and that's going to give me negative 12. A coincidence that we get that canceled out again shouldn't happen so much. All right, so that's step two. Step three is to add them together and see what I get. The a's drop out entirely. I'm left with 32z equals zero, and z equals zero, and that's step four. Step five, again, is to take that zero and plug it somewhere above. So I'm going to take the top one and plug it in to get 4, and then 2a equals 4, and a is 2. So now I'm claiming dun, 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 that 2, 0 is my solution. So we can check that <clears throat> a number of different ways. We can even graph and check it. But if I just do a quick check here, uh, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 0 is 4. 3 times 2 plus 0 is 6, and that does work. So commit to it. Now, one of the last things we're going to look at before we do an application is what if things aren't at all as we like? So things aren't aligned, things aren't oppositified, etc. So my first step is to align. And how do we do that? Well, it doesn't matter as long as they're the same form. The top one is standard form. The bottom one is no form, almost slope intercept. So either I can get this 2x to the other side, like this one is, or I can make the bottom here into standard form. Doesn't really matter, but I'm going to add, excuse me, subtract 3x from both sides. All right, which now gives me this. 2x is in standard form. Excuse me, the top one is in standard form with a negative 11. And the bottom one is now in standard form with a negative 21. So I've aligned it. So that's actually step one. Now step two is I need to multiply something by something. So notice I can actually just take the bottom and multiply by negative one. Why is that? Because then the y's drop out. So I get 2x plus 5y equals negative 11. Negative, excuse me, positive 3x minus 5y equals positive 21. So step two. Step three, I add them together. The y's in this case drop out. 5y equals positive 10. And my fourth step here is to divide both sides by 5 to get a 2. So step number five, I need to take that 2 and plug it somewhere. I'm going to plug it into the top. <clears throat> and I get this, 2 times x plus 5 times 2 equals negative 11, 2x equals, excuse me, let me finish that up, plus 10 equals negative 11, 2x equals negative 21, and x equals, however we want to write it, 11.5 or negative 11.5, negative 11 and a half, or 21, negative 21 over 2. Okay, now I'm claiming this is my solution, so step six is negative 11.5 comma 2. So how do I test it? Well, let's go ahead and open up a Desmos and do that. So let me check here. And wait a tick, what happened? That is not at all the solution I expected. So what do we do about that? Well, clearly, if this is to be correct, which it looks like it is, 2x, 5y, negative 11, I made a mistake somewhere, which is perfect. So let's go back and see where I may have made a mistake. Now, did you see my mistake? Good. I hope you caught it. Notice, for whatever reason, I put the wrong letter there. Great. So now that I have that, I can start making some changes here. So this guy here is an x, and so x is 2, not y. So it looks like all of this will need to go away and we plug in x there. So 2 times 2 plus 5y equals negative 10, 11, excuse me. 4 plus 5y 
equals negative 11, 5y equals negative 15, and x and y, excuse me, is negative 3. Ha 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 ha! And so when we check this right here, we do see that is exactly what I get. Good. So let it be known, you will often make mistakes. The last thing we're going to look at here is <clears throat> how to use this situation. Okay, so here we have a regular bouquet has five roses and 10, 11 peonies in a large bouquet. A mini bouquet has three roses and five peonies. So a florist is making regular bouquets and mini bouquets. The florist has 118 roses and 226 peonies to use in the bouquets. How many of each type of bouquet can the florists make? So the first thing we need to know is that we're, def we're looking for the how many bouquets of each. We've got a regular bouquet and we've got a mini bouquet. So I'm going to define my variables here. I'm going to call this one R for regular and I'm going to call this one M for mini. Okay, <clears throat> now notice over here is going to give us some more clues. In a regular bouquet we have five roses and eleven peonies. So in other words, if I look at just the roses, five roses per regular. So watch how that works here. Five roses times the number of regular plus, notice over here, three roses for the mini, three times the number of minis. The total is going to give me 118 roses. So the same thing and the same logic applies for the peonies. So we're going to look at 11 peonies per regular plus five peonies per mini, and in the end we get 226 peonies. And there's my system. Now of course we need to get opposites somehow, so I'm going to multiply the top here by 5. Why? So that the m here is 15. And I'm going to multiply the bottom by negative 3. Why? So the bottom here is negative 15. So let's do that. And we get 25r plus 15m equals 590. Negative 33r minus 15m equals negative 678. So that's step two. Now step three is to combine them. Those drop out and I'm left with negative 8r is equal to negative 88. So r is 11. What does that mean? I'm going to have 11 regular bouquets. All right, next step. Now to find out how many minis. So 5 times 11 plus 3 times the number of minis is equal to 118 roses. So 55 plus 3m equals 118, 3m equals 63, and m is equal to 21. So, what's the answer? 11 regular and 21 mini. Let's just double check that this works, and we can do so with a calculator. So that concludes this. Feel free to try the other ones. You are welcome.